pana sifiwe. Karibuni sana. This is the best place to be. Of other places, this is the best place to be. And I want to take this opportunity this morning to thank our bishop in absentia and among Pastor Alice, the pastoral team, and all the leaders in this church, and you, because you came. I want to go to the word because we have worshipped, we have praised, and now we want to hear the word of God. This month and last month, we've been looking at altars. For those who began with us in the month of January, we've been tackling the message on altars. And we are going to go through it until the month of February, this month, when we are through with our prayer and fasting. And I know we have learned a lot. There's some insight that we have come to know out of this month on the message of altars. And I believe our lives will never be the same again. And therefore, this morning, I want to talk our message on rekindle the altar fire. Rekindle the altar fire. Our key verse this morning is from the book of Exodus 20 and verse number 24. Exodus 20, 24, the Bible says, Build for me an altar made of earth. Made of earth. You know, earth is the, most, the cheapest thing you can work with. It is the earth. And offer your sacrifices to me. Your burnt offerings and peace offerings your sheep and goats and your cattle. Build my altar wherever I cause my name to be remembered. And I'll come to you and bless you. This morning, I'm standing upon the altar. And I know that this altar speaks an exchange. This altar has your vision. This altar has your your future. And I know this morning, we all have our own altars. That is the altar in your heart. But allow me this morning to, see, to speak about this altar where I'm standing this morning. Because this altar has been built so that the Lord will come and bless us. When you call upon his name upon this altar, he's going to bless us. Yes, you have built an altar and you have brought the offerings, but there's no fire to consume them. Friends, there's no altar without fire. And there's no fire without a sacrifice. These things go hand in hand. Where there is altar, there must be an offering. And where there's an offering, there must be fire. So where are we lacking? We have an altar, yes. Do we have an offering? The offering is the one that attracts the fire. The fire that's come from heaven. When the offering is accepted, the Lord releases fire. There are, some old, there are some sacrifices that cannot attract fire. So you only bring the sacrifice and there's no fire. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 12, 29, that for our God is a consuming fire. There's nobody who can consume your sacrifice. It is only our God because he is a consuming fire. What is an altar? An altar is a place of fellowship between a holy God and you. It is a place of fellowship between a holy God and you. had so many places you could have gone this morning, but you purpose and you chose to come to this church because this church has an altar and an altar has been elevated. It is not the same level with you. An altar is elevated. And that's why you came this morning because you knew there is a word from the altar. It's a place where God can meet with you. Our God is not a respect of anybody. When you come through those doors, he's already here to meet with you. And his fire can fall. The fire of blessing, the fire of renewal, and the fire of revival. All those things are upon this altar. An altar is the table of the Lord. We all know tables, and we have even tables in this church. An altar, it is the table of the Lord. What you place upon that table? It doesn't matter how expensive that table is. What matters is what you have placed upon that table that you attract the presence of the Lord and the fire from above. 
In the Old Testament, the altar was related directly to the spiritual and material blessings God intended for his people. But you know, as we are living in the New Testament, it was established so they could be restored to fellowship with him by bringing sin offering, guilt offering, and fellowship offering. How many of us this morning know that you can bring a sin offering? What do you do? We only repent. But the Bible talks about sin offering. That I bring this offering as a sacrifice for my sin. I know I sinned. Therefore, Lord, forgive me. And I connect your, for your forgiveness with this sin offering. Guilt offering and fellowship. We all need the fellowship of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the Lord is saying, what are you holding? What are you bringing before me? He needs a fellowship offering. In God's plan, the altar is a place for expressing lasting love. Lasting love. Our God does not love one day or two days. And because you fell, he, he, he's done with you. An altar is a place to express that lasting love. And that's why we have an altar this morning. At the altar, we give and receive. We all love receiving. But what have you brought to the altar this morning? What you have brought is what you are going to receive. At the altar, we give and we receive. It is a place of exchange. You come here as a sinner. You live as a saint. You come those, through those doors as a sinner. You go out of those doors as a saint. Because at an altar is a place of exchange. Abraham, we all know about Abraham, our father of faith. He brought Isaac. When he brought Isaac, the Lord exchanged Isaac with a sacrifice, with a lamb. Because he saw the heart of Abraham, that this man had nothing else left behind. Nothing else that was precious in his life. Therefore, he brought Isaac. And the Lord accepted the sacrifice of Isaac. And in turn, gave or exchanged Isaac with a lamb. You must be carrying something to the house of the Lord. At the altar. The altar what are you exchanging at the altar? The altar speaks an exchange. Restoring an altar for fresh fire today is not about building a new sanctuary or a physical sanctuary or maintaining a natural fire. No. But at the altar, God desires is a heart fully committed to him. You can give him everything and anything that you have. But what, is desire, what he desires is the altar of your heart. In the book of Proverbs 3, 9, Proverbs 3, 9, the Bible says, honor the, Lord your, honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything you produce. When we read this verse, we only think about what we do with our own hands. But I want somebody to do this morning that the first fruit in your, in your life it is your heart. Yes, you can bring everything. You can bring cows. You can bring calves. You can bring goats. You can bring sheep. You can bring anything that is in your barn. But the Lord is saying this morning, your heart is a first fruit. And that is what he desires. Because other things will come to an end. The altar stood at the core of God's plan of salvation. Because it pointed to the cross of Christ. That is the first altar. And that is the altar that you are clinging to even this morning. The altar at Calvary. Which is the source of all God's blessings. Do you want to be blessed? Connect to yourself. Anchor your faith at the altar at Calvary. Jesus said, it is finished. It is upon you now. To take yourself and your sins and whatever you have to the altar of Calvary. The altar then is where worship of God Almighty originates. Worship of God Almighty originates. Worship is acknowledging God as creator and redeemer. The beginning and the end. It means not only making him fast, but also start everything and finishing everything with him. You start with God, you finish with God. You know God holds our end coming to our beginning. And this morning he's saying, for me to have an altar in you, you must make me your beginning and your end. 
The only way we can build an altar and bring sacrifice of worship that honors God is by making him God of everything. Not God of some things, but God of everything that qualifies him to accept your sacrifice at the altar. Friends, without an altar of worship, spiritual progress and lasting change are not possible. We all need, we all want, it is our desire to progress spiritually. It is our desire to know God, not in a measure, but in his fullness. But without an altar of worship, those things cannot be achieved. There's a difference between an altar and a platform. This is not a platform. Politicians do not use altars, they use platforms. And you know, altars speak an exchange. And altars, whatever they promise, they bring to pass. An altar delivers. This altar delivers. But platform, they promise. And promises are not realistic. Where are you? Are you on an altar or a platform? Altar fire can only be rekindled only in the context of a right standing relationship with God. We are in this world. We pass through many things. And this makes our fire, our altar fire to go off. But there's only one who can rekindle that fire. And it is our God. Depending on our right relationship. On our right standing with our God who holds the fire. In the book of Mark 12 and verse number 30. The Bible says, and you must, not you will. It is not a desire. It is not a request. It is a must. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. Where is your heart this morning? You can love him with your soul. You can love him with your mind. But where is your heart this morning? And finally, with your strength. These are four key things. And this makes a human being. Your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the Lord is a jealousy God. He wants everything those four parts, he wants to dwell there and be the, 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 the owner of those four things. It means submitting to his authority fully and walking in his holy reverence of his majesty. Holy, not halfway, but holy. We know how to submit to our, to our employers because you know when you don't submit at the end of the year, there's no salary increment. But how is your submissive to God? Do you submit to him wholly? Because he is a jealousy God. At the altar, you will see the fulfillment of your desires. Do you have a desire this morning? At the altar, desires are fulfilled. At the altar, visions are fulfilled. It doesn't matter how long it has taken, but visions are fulfilled at the altar. And your purpose, why are you living? You don't just live because it is a new day. Today is Sunday, you are living. No, you live with a purpose. But every purpose is fulfilled at the altar. Because the altar holds your destiny. Leviticus 6.13, the Bible says, remember, they have been reminded. Remember, we have been reminded. The fire must be kept burning on the altar at all times. It must never go out. This was a call for the priest and not to just remove the ash because you know wherever there is fire, there must be ash. And I think I'm speaking to those who are from Gishagi. You know, the, this generation, you don't know what, what ash is. Munajua jivu. Munajua jivu. Amujui jivu. Okay. Jivu is what you get. <laughs> Can I explain what is jivu? Munajua jivu? And he has many purposes. Even kumwago kwacho to be cement. Panasifiwe. You carry a jerry can of water and a packet of ash. Every altar where there is fire, there must be ash. And this was the work of the priest to remove the, even us at, at home, if you don't remove the ash, the fire cannot continue burning. Even your mother will tell you, can't you think on the yajana? You cannot place the fresh firewood for today upon yesterday's ash. Are we together? And that is what we do. 
We don't remove the ash. We keep on putting fire. And our fire gets off. At the altar, we must remove the ash. The priest had to keep the fire burning by adding wood. They add wood when they have removed the ash. If they only remove the ash, then halfway the work was being done. They were to keep feeding the fire. Is the fire at the altar still on? Are the priests still doing their work? The fire on the altar symbolized the presence of God. That's why the Bible says in the book of Leviticus that this fire at the altar should never, never go off. Because when it is goes off, the presence of the Lord departs. When they saw we are on the fire, when they say we are on fire for Jesus, that's what we normally say. We are on fire for Jesus. We can say there is a strong presence of God in our life. And that is evident and he is moving. The fire didn't just burn to burn, but it burned to consume the sacrifice. I come again. The fire did not just burn to burn, but it burned to consume the sacrifice that was on the altar. Therefore, we must place some sacrifice on the altar to keep this fire burning. Is there a sacrifice of your life that is worthy to be consumed wholly by God? The fire of God is never, the fire, sorry, the fire of heaven, the fire of God in heaven is never extinguished. Sometimes on the earth, we quench that which should remain burning. We quench that was supposed to continue burning. But the fire of God in heaven can never be quenched. People will, people will put your fire off, but if it is from God, it can never go off. Abraham, without the altar, there's no place of sacrifice. Do we have an altar? Without the altar, there's no place of... Because you, the, when you place the sacrifice, you need an altar to place the sacrifice. Abraham prepared an altar for sacrificing Isaac. The Lord spoke. Elijah prepared an altar before the prophets of Baal, the Lord manifested. Friends, you have your part, and the Lord has his part. Yes, the altar is here. Bring the sacrifice. Prepare the altar. Bring the sacrifice, and the Lord will manifest. In these two incidences, nobody had a matchbox to light the fire. When the altar is prepared and accepted, the consuming fire comes down. Remember Moses with the burning bush? Did anybody light that fire? It is God. When Abraham laid Isaac on the altar, fire came from heaven. When, uh, no, when Elijah prepared the, the sacrifice with the, Baals, with the prophets of Baal, he, he, he did everything and said, now let's watch. Nobody had a matchbox to light the fire. It is only God. And I want to submit to you this morning. If your altar is prepared with a sacrifice, the Lord will bring the fire. That is his part. For many of us, we will remain preparing the altar and putting the sacrifice. Unless the sacrifice is accepted, there will be no fire. There is no fire without a sacrifice. It follows Father that without the fire of his presence, there is no glory. God wants to take the glory. It's you to prepare the altar and bring the sacrifice and for him to bring the fire and then he takes the glory. When the altar, when the fire of the altar goes off, worship becomes a ritual. When the fire on the altar goes off, worship becomes a ritual. Love becomes self-serving. And spiritual life simply becomes a religion. These are the consequences when the fire of, at the altar has gone off. Let's go on. Three, three, three reasons why the fire goes out. Because you're asking yourself, I'm still born again. I didn't say you're not born again. 
We are very much born again, even me, and we are on the road to heaven. When I see you, we are not going back, we are on the road to heaven. But three things why the fire goes out. Number one, neglect. Neglect. We are busy attending to our personal interests. I said number one is neglect. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 13, verse 11 to 13, the Bible says, before we go here, this, was a, this is a story, or you can read it at your own time. It was Samuel and Saul. Samuel, they had a covenant with the soul that they are going to offer a sacrifice. Samuel is going to offer a sacrifice. And he told Saul, go and wait for me at Gilgal, and I'll come at the seventh day. The seventh day means God's completion. So he said, I'll come on the seventh day. But in verse number 11, and Samuel said, so before, he, before we go to, to verse 11, Saul thought Samuel had taken too much time. Seven days. And so what he decided, he decided to perform, the, 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 to, do the, to, to offer the sacrifice. And Samuel said in verse number 11, what have you done, Saul? What have you done? Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash, then I said, the Philistines will now come down on, on me at Gilgal and I have not made sub, sub, supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. Verse number 13. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded to you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Friends, Saul waited for Samuel for seven days. And they had agreed. He said seven days. And this was in the evening, the seventh day. Saul had waited for the Lord for seven good days until in the evening he gave up. How many times have you given up in life? How many times have you given up in salvation? In the evening, Saul decided, I'm going to offer the sacrifice. Remember this. Saul was not a priest. Saul was not a prophet. So he did against the will and the wish of the Lord. And out of this, Samuel told him, the Lord could have established, could have, because now it's a thing of the past, could have established your kingdom over Israel. But it came to an end. Yes, I know the Lord has promised you so many things, but the Lord might not come at sunrise. He can come at sunset. But you have decided to take it upon yourself. Yes, you know you want to get married. You decided now, because the Lord has taken so much, let me be married to this and born again person. Then, in the long run, he might begin to born again in, my, in, in, in our marriage. I want to submit to you this morning that your marriage is not a crusade ground. Wait for the Lord. Because every choice in life has a consequence. Saul's kingdom came to an end just because of sacrificing, and he was not meant to do it. He waited for, he waited for Samuel for seven good days, as they had promised. But the evening, in the evening, he fell into that temptation. And Saul offered a sacrifice. And it was not acceptable. Instead, it took away his kingdom or his kingship. Sometimes you offer sacrifice for the wrong reason. King Saul lost his kingship, kingship because he offered a sacrifice he was not authorized to offer. When he saw his soldiers begin to scatter in the face of war with the Philistines, he offered a sacrifice or an offering in panic. There are many things that we do because of panic. There are many things that we do because of the pressure of people. And my prayer this morning is, wait for the Lord. He may not come at sunrise. He can come at sunset. May we be found waiting. Saul waited for Samuel until the seventh day and they had agreed but not until evening. Remember where? Six days and three quarter. Just that quarter took away his kingdom. 
How many times have we decided we cannot wait any longer? God has not appeared in our timetable. Therefore, we move on and we move out of his will. The moment you move on, you move out of the will of God because he said, wait. It is not sinning that ruins man. It is not sinning that ruins men. But sinning and not repenting, falling and not getting up. Saul was not remorseful. When someone asked him, what have you done? He gave excuses. Men came against me and I thought, now uh, the Philistines are coming. He did not repent. He gave excuses. How many times have you been caught red-handed? And you said, I did not cheat. It was wisdom. It is not sin. It is an issue. It is a weakness. How many times? Number two, only God can start the fire. Sometimes in our Christian walk, instead of going to God and asking him to send his fire, we start our own fires. We then try to fan that fleshly fire through activities, through programs, and through events. Those fleshy fires. But human fire is very destructive. For every human fire we start in the house of the Lord, particularly in spiritual ministry, a price must be paid directly or indirectly, either today or in future. I come again. For every human fire we start in the house of the Lord, particularly in spiritual ministry, a price must be paid directly or indirectly, either today or in future. You might say, me, I was very wise. I did this. But remember this. There is a price to pay. And in future, not even today, in future, you'll have to pay it. In the book of Leviticus 9.24, and fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. The fire consumes the offering. Also showing the masses of God that takes away our sin and shame and restores us into right standing with God. When the sacrifice is consumed, it was definitely that our sins have been forgiven. And these people, they shouted and fell on their faces because they have been accepted and their sins have been forgiven. All our sacrifices and incense must be offered through this fire. Friends, nothing goes to God but that but what comes from him. Nothing goes to God. If that sacrifice is acceptable, it goes to God and then it comes down to us. Nothing goes to God but what comes from him. Number three, obedience. Our worship is demonstrated through wholehearted obedience to God's will. Indeed, the only way to honor God and express our true love is by obeying him. What is he telling you this morning? The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice before the Lord's eyes. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience requires total submission to God and determination to fulfill his purpose. Total Submission to God. You cannot divide submission. God cannot take a half. Not even a three quarter. He wants total submission. That's why he says some obedience is better than sacrifice. Obey him. Then come along with your sacrifice. Obedience involves some measure of sacrifice 
at the altar. That is why it was so painful for Jesus to go to the cross. Because he knew he is the altar and he is the sacrifice. It was not easy for him. But he took it all because of me and you. And he knew that I and you, we cannot go to the, to, the, to, the, to the cross. So he said, I will be the altar and I'll be the sacrifice and my fire will bring fire. At some point, he thought the father has, for, father has for, forgotten him. And he asked, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because it was not easy. It was very painful. He became the altar and the sacrifice. The altar in our hearts as believers, the fire is, the altar is our hearts, is our hearts as believers. The fire is the presence of God. We keep the fire burning by listening and obeying to God's words in our lives. You cannot find this fire. You, cannot, you can only find it by obeying God's word and listening to him. And also abiding in the righteousness that we have been given in Christ Jesus. And walking in holiness and purity all the days of our lives. Not some days, but all the days of our lives. For this altar to maintain the fire. It is very costly. It is not easy. When people are saying yes, you are saying no. When people are saying no, you are saying yes. Because you must maintain the fire at the altar. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Are we together? Indicators that show that your spiritual flame is off. You are asking, how can I tell? And I think I'm on fire for Jesus. How can I tell? There are some indicators that your spiritual flame is off. You are born again. We are all born again. And we are all going to heaven. But at some point, we lost the fire. At some point, the ash became more than the wound. At some point, the wounds were not dry. So there was no fire at the altar. Number one, your interest in the word of God has decreased. Your interest in the word of God has decreased. You don't value the word of God. It's either here or there. And you are born again. When you feel that you don't have the, the, the interest of the word of God, Remember this, that your fire, your inner fire, at your inner altar, it has decreased. Number two, your prayer life is not what it used to be. Your prayer life is not what it used to be. You are on fire for Jesus. When you have this prayer meeting, you are number one. And you know in prayer meetings, there's no congestion. People line up because of food. But where there is prayer, there's no lining up. You used to be there because you are on fire for Jesus. Now you pray, our Father who art in heaven. Can you imagine? Our Father, seven times, seven, yeah, seven times, Father who art in heaven. What is the difference between you and a Muslim? What is the difference between you and him or the Oha? Seven times our father who was in heaven. Number three. Your worship attendance is no longer a priority. It's no longer a priority. You come to church when you are late. When the worship team is just about to sit down. Let me bring to your attention this morning. That worship Word without the worship is like taking ugali without umboga. You see, dry ugali, ugali without stew, that is the word without the worship. The worship brings the, our father down and then he ministers to us. Number four, you are giving to the Lord has lacked off or stopped completely your giving. You are giving to the Lord has lacked off or stopped completely. Giving is not a priority. Si wengine wametoa. Alpanisipotoa. Si wengine wametoa. 
We are receiving in there. The Bible says that Jesus stood at the offering basket. And that's where he saw the widow who gave two pennies. At the offering box. Jesus owns everything. But he stood there to prove them wrong. Number five. You want to know why your fire has gone off? You really, if ever talked to others about Jesus. You sit next to a sinner. You cannot even... You, ladies that go to the salon and men that go to the, to, to the, to the kinyosi. You really talk to Jesus. In, to anybody about Jesus. Because the fire has already gone off. At the Apokoyo matter too. Ask your neighbor, how are you? Yes. Eh, no, no, this is February. And it rained yesterday. Begin there. You go to the kinyosi. You go to the salon. Don't wait to be given this pulpit. All of us. If all of us could have this pulpit every Sunday. You carry your own pulpit. Wherever you go, ask your neighbor. Are you, do you know Jesus? If you are born again, yes. Everybody is born again. Even the devil comes from the water and says, Everybody is born again. Born, born as has been like, like greetings. But ask somebody, how are you? Do you know Jesus Christ? He tell you no. Who is Jesus Christ? Is he among the prophets? Is he among uh, uh, Akikuyu? Is he among Aluo? Now we start from there. This year of the great catch, we must do things differently. We must multiply. And demultiply the kingdom of devil. We must multiply our kingdom because these people are ours. They are created in the image and likeness of God. It is us to go out and bring them to the kingdom, not wait for them. Who among us here, where you live, a doctor comes to knock at your door. Nasema habari? Kuna mtu mkoncho hapa? Does it happen in your plot or in your estate? Anybody sick here? I'm a doctor. I'm looking for sick people. Does it happen in your, where you live? And you're waiting for the sinners to come? We'll go for them. We all go to seek medical attention. We line up. And there's nobody who is patient like a patient. You go to the clinic. The last person is at the corner. And the doctor's office is here. And I tell you, you will line up until your number comes. But for souls, we are so comfortable because you and your house are born again. What about your brother? You're supposed to be a brother's keeper. It is this year. Finally, you don't feel as close to God as you once did. You don't feel. You and you ask here to I go to church on Sunday and I'm okay. You don't go an extra mile to seek this God because you want to be close to him. Friends, if you are close to a parent, you, you, you eat the best of that home. Are we together? When you are close to your parent. But when you are far away, utakuta walikula na wakosha viombo. When you are close to the Lord, he's going to whisper to you a word. He's going to whisper to you a message. But you feel nowadays you're not close to God. You are close to what? Because it is either God or something else. You are close to what? This morning, how is the fire of your altar inside before we come to this altar? How is your fire? Is there ash? And the woods dry? Or they are wet? When they are wet, there is a lot of, a lot of smoke. So there is no fire. But the Lord is saying this morning, it is only me, the Lord, who has a matchbox to light that fire? Do you want him to light that fire? Do you feel you need him? Do you need where you do, do you feel where you are? You are not you are not where you used to be. You live in Nilikua, Nilikua, Nilikua. You are supposed to move from one glory to another. But you are so stagnant. You are so comfortable. You are so contented. And you feel, me, I just want to go to heaven. If that was the purpose of God, we could have been born again today and then we go to heaven. But he wants us to walk close to close with him. 
winning souls, telling people about the beauty of it. We have never been to heaven, but we know there is beauty in heaven. Because where we are going, there's no sickness. Where we are going, there's no death. Where we are going, there's no lack. And you're supposed to be the mouthpiece. But the Lord is saying this morning, are you there? You want me to light that fire again? I hold the matchbox. Nobody, not your works, not your righteousness, can lit that fire. It is only God who has a matchbox. And he's saying this morning, bring your sacrifice. Prepare the altar and I'll bring down the fire. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to honor you this morning. Yes, Jehovah Father, we fall short of your glory every time because you are human. But this morning we send ourselves to you, Jehovah God. Did you come and lit our fire? Oh God, come and remove the ash. Come and give us fresh own, dry own to your Father so that you can consume our sacrifice. Maybe you are here this morning and this has been the cry of your heart. Revive me. Revive me. Light my fire again. If that has been your cry, and the prayer of your heart, raise up your hand and we pray together. Father, we thank you for those hands. We thank you because you know you search our heart. And this morning, Jehovah Father, we know you are holding the matchbox so that you can consume our sacrifice and put us on fire once again for you. This has been the second month in this year, dear Father. We know that come December, We'll have a testimony and a story to tell. I want to thank you. And I want to bless you because you are a merciful God. And you are a generous God. We honor you this morning and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.